Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm sharing with you how to make chicken kolapuri, which is essentially a kolapuri style chicken curry. It's a relatively more involved chicken curry to make, but the payoff is so worth it that you'll not regret the additional effort. And this deliciously spicy kolapuri style chicken curry will become your go-to chicken curry for special occasions or just the weekend. So let's get started. You'll need to start with marinating the chicken, for which you'll need chicken leg quarters. I have used 3 pounds here since I usually always make a bigger batch of this curry. And for marination you'll need 5 tablespoons of ginger garlic paste, a tablespoon each of red chilli powder, garam masala powder, coriander powder, a teaspoon of cumin powder, a tablespoon of kasuri methi flakes and half a teaspoon of turmeric powder and then a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of lemon juice and one to two tablespoons of water or oil. I usually go with oil. Now mix all the ingredients together to make a marinade. And then apply it to the chicken, ensuring to coat the chicken pieces really well. And ideally it's best to marinate this chicken for at least 4-6 to six hours for it to really absorb the spices well. Then here are the ingredients you'll need to make the Kolapuri curry paste. Whole spices like 1 bay leaf, 2 inch cinnamon stick, 7 peppercorns, 1 black cardamom, 5 green cardamom, 7 cloves and 1 mace, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, 2 whole dry red chilies, 4 tablespoon white sesame seeds, 2 tablespoon coriander seeds, 2 tablespoon white poppy seeds, and a tablespoon of Kashmiri chili powder, 2 teaspoons of red chili powder, about 2.5 teaspoon of salt, and half cup dried desiccated coconut, then 2 cups of chopped onions, 3 fourth cup of chopped tomatoes, 8 cloves of garlic roughly sliced, about half cup of chopped coriander leaves, and oil for making curry and water too. Now to begin with, in a white pan, heat up half cup of oil and then add in 1 teaspoon cumin seeds. When the cumin seeds start crackling, add in 8 cloves of garlic, roughly sliced, and saute for 2-3 to three minutes till the garlic just about starts changing color. Then add in 2 whole chilies, broken in 2 pieces like this, and lightly roast it for just about 30-60 to 60 seconds. It's now time to add in and roast the whole spices. Start with adding all of the whole garam spices together. A bay leaf, cinnamon sticks, 5 green and 1 black cardamom and 7 cloves and peppercorns each. And lightly roast it for 1 to 2 minutes till it starts giving off a light aroma. Then add in the 2 tablespoon of coriander seeds and lightly roast it for 1 to 2 minutes till there is a slight change in color. After which add in 4 tablespoon of sesame seeds and lightly roast it for another 1-2 to two minutes till there is a slight deepening in color. And here there is a reason I am choosing to roast the spices in this order, adding the bigger coriander seeds first to give it a head start compared to the smaller sesame and poppy seeds so that everything gets evenly roasted. Now finally add in the 2 tablespoon of poppy seeds and lightly roast it for 1-2 to two minutes till it starts to slightly change color. When the whole spices have been roasted, add in 2 cups of chopped onions and a teaspoon of salt and saute till the onions turn light golden brown in color. This might take about 15 to 20 minutes or so, but it's a crucial step so it's best to not skip or rush it. And this is where using a white pan will really help by speeding up this process. When the onions are done, add in 3 4th cup of chopped tomatoes. Mix it in. And a teaspoon of red chilli powder. And mix everything together. And saute for about 5 minutes or so. Till the tomatoes cook down a bit. And then turn off the flame. Then in another pan, dry roast half cup of dry desiccated coconut till it gets lightly roasted and turns light reddish in color. This should take only a few minutes, 
but ensure to do this on a relatively low flame so that it gets evenly roasted without getting burnt. When done, add this to the main roast and mix it in. There's no need to switch the flame back on. I just add it here so that the flavors get a chance to blend together while the roast cools down a bit. When the roast is cooled down, blend it in a mixy along with two cups of water to make a smooth paste. This will be the Kolapuri masala paste for the chicken curry. Now for making the curry, in a large heavy bottomed pan, lightly heat up 3 tablespoon of oil and to it add 1 tablespoon of Kashmiri chilli powder and mix it in and lightly roast the chilli powder on low flame for just about 30 seconds or so ensuring that the oil is not too hot or the flame too high else the chilli powder will burn then add in the blended masala base from the mixi a teaspoon of red chilli powder the marinated chicken and here if you had refrigerated this ensure to thaw this chicken at room temperature for at least 20 to 30 minutes before adding it here in the curry then add in about 4 cups of water and 1 and a half teaspoon of salt mix everything together and cover and cook this for about 30 to 40 minutes on medium high flame stirring intermittently till the chicken is fully cooked when done add in the chopped coriander leaves and also kolapuri tari which is optional but highly recommended if you want the full experience of the spicy delicious kolapuri flavors a basic tari is usually made just by lightly roasting chili powder in oil but I've shared my exact measurements in the post link below, so check it out if you're interested. And there you have it, deliciously spicy chicken kolapuri. Make it for your next special occasion or just the weekend. Serve it with rice or naan if you prefer and enjoy. For the written and printable version of this recipe, check the link in the description box below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button at the bottom of this video. It really helps me out. And subscribe if you haven't already. Until I see you again, happy cooking!